At the House of European History, we have a European scope. We address our learning resource not only to the teachers from Brussels, but from all around Europe. The mission is to address um, the European history and European integration with a multi-perspectivity. How do we know what are the needs and expectations from teachers across Europe? Because this is a very large scope. So what we did recently is to interview and do an evaluation with a thousand teachers from across Europe. And we learned that most, a large majority of teachers are using learning resources from museum to add this in their learning practice and in their teaching practice. They uh, identify museum as a place of trust. They find these resources reliable and they find that it allows to multiple the perspectivity and also to encourage critical thinking. I also would like to bring uh, in this the new museum definition, where it is said that museum is accessible and inclusive, and it fosters diversity and sustainability. With this definition in mind, we developed our learning resources for teachers at the House of European History. We are very lucky. We have uh, almost 30% of our audience are made of school students. Um, and we based our, our reflection on a system that we call the three R. Remember, reflect, and respond. Remember, it's the role of memory. It's the role of the knowledge acquisition that you have in all programs. Reflect. It's about critical thinking, it's about inquiry-based, asking questions, it's about creating links between today's world and the past, and the curiosity for the past to understand today's world better. And respond, it is to create this active citizenship. We recently launched a new workshop called the EU Pioneers, where students are discovering the life of those EU um, pioneers that created an EU when the idea even didn't exist after the Second World War. We also do this with online programs and we are currently developing a digital toolbox uh, for, that will be available in 24 languages. And we always use this um, visible thinking uh, method or other methodology because it helps us to identify the question and the concerns that students have and then the facilitator can create the, the content based on this. Um, it also helps to develop observation. We are in a museum, it's object-based. It's important that first students observe the object that they have in front of them and that they notice things. It's, it's important that we have videos, so the one that prefer to learn by moving images can do this. The one that prefer to, um, to have all the information about the facts can also have this at different points, either in the on-site activity, but also in the uh, online um, toolbox that we are currently developing. It's a mission from the House of European History to be inclusive. How do you do that? You can do this by developing content that includes different perspective, which is again our mission, but you can also do it by including different voices, including the voices of minorities, you can also do this by uh, the methodology you use to create a safe space that, uh, where students can say what they think without judgment, that all answers are welcomed, whether it is a funny answer, whether it is a provoking answer. All of these voices need to have a safe space to be vocalized. To include different voices, um, we, we do include uh, also women in the digital toolbox, uh, in the EU leaders. It's not only the men who signed the treaties, we also developed a module on Simone Weil and Louise Weiss to show their role and to include their voice in the, the general context of these EU leaders. Civic engagement is also facilitated by the fact that the House of European History is for free. You don't pay the entrance, you don't pay for the workshop, you don't pay for the guided tours and neither for the event. So stay tuned and come and visit us.